David Shaw here with another off the record story. If you want to learn more about Washington, D.C., come visit my site, offtherecordtours.com. Let's go. I'm here in Lincoln Park, which is part of my favorite neighborhood in Washington, Capitol Hill, and I'm here to explore the life of Mary McLeod Bethune, who is remembered in this sculpture behind me. As time has moved on, we've probably forgotten a lot about Bethune's contributions to American life, which are unfortunate because they are significant. Now, if you've been wandering and exploring Washington, you probably recognize the style of Robert Burks. He is the sculptor of this piece, and he's also done the Albert Einstein statue outside the National Academy of Sciences and the bust of John F. Kennedy at the Kennedy Center. And this is a monumental work. It's 17 feet tall, and as you walk around it, you really feel small. And I think that's what Burks had in mind. This is a monumental person, worthy of something that stands out and takes up space and commands this square. Now, in the 1930s, there were a number of organizations advocating for the full inclusion of African Americans but very few focused on the needs of women. And amongst those, there wasn't a lot of cooperation or shared vision. And Bethune wanted something more, and she wanted something stronger. So in 1935, she founds the National Council of Negro Women. And it's all about education, political activism, and learning how to use the levers of power in Washington just the way everyone else does. And they did it all out of this house which was the council's headquarters and Bethune's home. She was also a close friend of Carter Woodson, and we're gonna visit his house, which is not far from here on a future episode. Today, this house is a National Historic Site run by the Park Service. And if you're in the neighborhood, it's definitely worth a visit. It's open during non-pandemic times. And there are a number of artifacts here, and each of them has a backstory that shows you the remarkable breadth of Bethune's outreach. Now the cane depicted in the statue was once owned by President Franklin Roosevelt and it's given to Bethune by her good friend First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt as a gift upon the President's death. Now I like the cane here she never really used the cane for a physical purpose but she liked to carry it because she said it gave her swagger and I like the cane here because it illustrates the delicate space Bethune has to operate in during the Roosevelt administration. Roosevelt wanted to pass his New Deal laws, and the only way he could do that was with the support of Southern Democrats who were very much against civil rights. So while the Roosevelt administration is not openly hostile to African Americans, say the way the Woodrow Wilson administration was, it is a difficult place to operate. Bethune is the only woman among 45 African-American people who serve as the informal black cabinet to Roosevelt, advising him on civil rights and racial issues. So it's a very small space. She has to press the envelope as an advocate for African-Americans while operating in a place that's somewhat confined to hearing that message. And it's especially bad during World War II where everything is focused on winning the war. And issues like civil rights would be seen as a distraction. And some people who were even advocating for them would be called unpatriotic because they were distracting the focus of the country from the war effort. Bethune is the 15th of 17 children. And she is the first of her parents' children born into freedom. Hers was a monumental life, worthy of this statue and more. Well, I hope you enjoyed that off the record story. If you wanna learn more about Washington, D.C., things seen and unseen, arrange your tour of your nation's capital at offtherecordtours.com. Until then, I'm David Shaw.